देखिए तो उसको सौर हो Should we go ahead, maybe? Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna. Oh. So I have the control, but I cannot uh, change the slides actually. Like, yeah. Uh, hold on. I think you can. Let me just see. Here. Up. Um... Can you try now with the with the arrow or go ahead? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it works. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I I guess yeah, let's start. Um, I yeah, thank you Nadesh for for sharing the screen and uh, this presentation. So thank you everybody for joining. Um, I have first of all a couple of practical uh, tips probably. Uh, so I I recommend all of you to use the full screen if you can because I think it would be easier to view the presentation like this. And then apart from that, I uh, hope you're familiar with uh, the Zoom controls. If you're not familiar, then I can just explain that you have on the bottom of the, of the screen, you should see uh, some controls over the meeting. So you're gonna have their chat, for instance, and chat is an important thing during this session because you're gonna input your comments or questions there. Um, and apart from that, you can activate your microphone and uh, camera from there also. So like this now, you know. Uh, so we're recording this session and I think what we can start with is just uh, uh, not to do the introduction, right, Nadesh, but... Um, yeah, we'll do it with uh, uh, Paul, yeah. Okay, perfect. So then just maybe introduce ourselves. And uh, from my side, my name is Diana and I work in life sciences department in Elsevier and in my department is where we develop uh, databases like Embase and the, the presentation today is going to be dedicated to this. Uh, I've been working in Elsevier for a year now and I'm really happy to have a, a possibility to make this session for you. Nadesh, would you like to... Uh, yeah, go? I'll add the same. So I'll complete what Diana just said. I'm uh, Nadesh uh, Krebs and uh, I work also at Elsevier. I've been working for almost two years. Uh, I'm a consultant for Embase. So um, I, give, I usually give the trainings uh, for a lot of people in a lot of countries uh, in Europe. Okay, perfect. So... Then also, um, during the presentation, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, type them into the chat or just stop us and uh, please ask. So feel free to do it. Uh, let's start. And uh, to begin, let's go through the agenda for today. So we're going to be 
speaking in English and uh, it's going to be written in English as well. Um, so for the agenda, today we're going to start with uh, checking your connection first because it's important to see the latency if there is any. Um, we are going to introduce you into Research for Life uh, a little bit and see how you can access and base through um, Research for Life or through World Health Organization. Then we're going to give you a couple of examples of coronavirus infection. And uh, at the end, we're going to go through uh, some interactive polls and surveys. And of course, use the chat. On the right hand side, you can see some useful links. And these useful links are uh, to access some base through uh, WHO or um, also through Research for Life website. And then this is uh, first. And then the second is the access of 20,000 full text articles connected to coronavirus. That is something that else we are made available right now in the situation that we're living in. I think it's important. So all these links you're gonna receive them afterwards so you can easily access it, okay? Um, these are the no, today. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. So because then for for research for life uh domitiana would you like to go ahead sure absolutely so thank, thank you. you uh and um hi everyone my name is not on the slide but it doesn't matter <laughs> um my name is domitiana francescon and i'm the co-chair of the communications and marketing committee and i'm i'm only gonna take a minute because i just want to make sure that everyone on the call I'm sure you're familiar with Research for Life, but I just want to make sure um, that you know where to find us and what Research for Life in itself does if you're not. So as you should know, Research for Life, it's a unique um, public-private partnerships and uh, it's between UN agencies, universities, and right now we have 160 publishers within Research for Life. Uh, the goal of Research for Life is to reduce the knowledge gap and to stimulate productive and effective research um, between countries. And Research for Life has been active for 20 years, since 2002, which I think it's really, really great. Um, and we have provided access to up to 10,000 institutions in around the globe um, with access to up to um, 100,000 journals and books in the fields of health, agriculture, the environment, applied sciences, and the law. Um, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with um, the major Research for Life programs, but um, we, we have five that make up Research for Life and are Hinari for Health, Agora for Agriculture, Ware, Ardi, and Goali. And you can find a lot of information about all the programs on our website. And I'll make sure that there are some links in the chat because what we really like is for you, all of you on the call to stay in touch and join our online communities for Research for Life. We have communities specific for users in listservs and dgroups. Uh, we also have very active Facebook and Twitter groups. And these are really good resources for you on the call to stay up to date in what's coming next, what are webinars for our resources we have available, and to ask us all the questions um, you need to ask. And just to conclude, uh, we're really happy that Elsevier has added Embase to the Research for Life collection. Uh, we think it's a really important resources and I'm really glad that you've joined this webinar. And I'm gonna get back to you, Diana and Nadesh. Thank you. Okay, um, so then I think now that you know uh, the speakers and we've introduced ourselves and we can go ahead with the presentation. Okay, with, with the, the survey. Poll, <laughs> with the survey, so the first survey is um up oh, it's this one here you go so you're all gonna get uh the normally you should get a question popping on your screen it's just to know where you are uh, located so is it uh in which area of the world so then we know if it's uh, coffee time if it's uh, tea time for the afternoon if it's okay, I think we're good. So I will stop and show you the results. Can you see it? Mm, yeah. Okay. So we have 29% of the people are in Africa, 43% Europe. 7%, 1% in Middle East, 
two people in Asia and one in other, what is the other country then, <laughs> or the other part of the world? We'll see maybe in the chat. So, okay. So now we know that uh, the second um, the poll is on your level of expertise with Embase. If you've ever heard of it, maybe you have, but have you ever tried it or have you had a chance to use it? Here you should get a second poll. Okay, so here I'm gonna share the results. So we have more beginners and some people have had some, uh, some experience. <clears throat> so we'll go through the different levels anyway during the, the training. Okay, uh, Diana, it's uh, your. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, um, so let's first of all check your connection okay so like this we know if uh, the slides that we're talking about you also see them and uh, if you do then how, how long does it take uh, for for the system to to load it um so right now you're going to see on the screen the picture of a flower okay and when you see it could you please type now in the chat so the picture is on please go ahead Can you see the chat, Diana? Yeah, yeah, I see. I see the chat. I think there is no, not a lot of delay, right? Okay. It's, uh, cool. Yeah. So most of you can see it quite quickly. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So I'm gonna try to go a little bit slower, but at the same time, um, I, I see that you responded quite quickly. That's good. Um, so as mentioned before, there are two ways to access Embase. Uh, so one of the ways is going to be if you go to the website of uh, the World Health Organization here and then you're going to go into Inari and then there you have to log in to the system. Okay, so um, that's how it works. It is important though that you log in because like this you're going to actually get the access to all the full text and the ebooks and other resources. Okay, so don't forget to log in here. Uh, there is another way though and the other way is go to the Research for Life website. And then from this website, you can also log in and like this, you're going to see uh, according to your institution, what accesses do you have available? Okay. Um, I hope if you have any questions also about the access, please uh, write it down in the chat. Uh, it's no problem. And now let's start then to talk about Embase because that's uh, what we're here for today. Uh, so why do we say, uh, you see here, Embase is the most comprehensive biomedical database, so why do we say it? And actually we say it because um, it has more than 8,000 magazines and 35 million of records, okay? Um, which is especially for the people who used PubMed before or Medline, um, Embase would contain 3,000 magazines more than in Medline. So you could not have found them uh, otherwise if not using for Embase. The content of Embase covers in depth the topics of drugs, diseases, and medical devices. Okay, uh, this content may, may also be relevant for pharmacovigilance and for evidence based medicine. Go, go, go. Uh, and also, you are going to have the access to international sources. Embase contains uh, also some information from the conferences, so it's not just articles and just published literature, but you also are going to have the access for abstracts from the conferences. Uh, with Embase, you can export your search, you can save it, you can share it with your colleagues, and you're mm -hmm. going to see it a little bit more uh, when we go ahead. So, in Embase, you have more international coverage, okay? And uh, with this international coverage, let's, let's check it right here. You see the graph, and you see that, yes, uh, the most part of the content is in Europe, but there is also uh, content from the North America, from Asia Pacific, and from the rest of the world. And when we see more precisely, let's go into Europe. 
So in Europe, you have listed the countries here. And for these countries, you see in blue the coverage that is covered by Embase and the, the coverage of Medline in orange. So like this, you see per country, what is actually the difference of the content, like how much content is provided, okay? You see the same for Middle East, Africa, and Latin America. Maybe some of you are from this country, so uh, I think it's good to see uh, in your country what is available in Embase and Medline and uh, Asia and Pacific. So uh, one thing is very good is to have all this content, but what do we actually do with the content? So like this, it's easily uh, searchable and uh, what makes Embase, Embase, right? So first of all, all the Embase content is peer reviewed. And once uh, you have the text and you go through it, uh, all our indexes, they actually go through the full text uh, of the articles, okay? So it's not just, they don't just use the abstract, but they use the full text. And with this full text, what do they do is that they extract the relevant concepts and they index them according to our M3 Tetharos. So if you're familiar with MESH, with Medline Tetharos, in Embase we have something similar that is called M3. And this is how our uh, terms are indexed. So first of all, you take the text, you go through the text manually, and then you index the terms, relevant terms from the text, and you index them in M3 Tetharos. And like this, at the end, you have very in-depth information on every article that you're going into. You can see the original title, you can see the abstract of the, uh, of the article, but you can also see very quickly all the drug terms that are mentioned in the article and all the disease terms that are mentioned in there. I actually don't know, but I think so. I know that you're using PubMed. Uh, so let's, let me introduce you a little bit into the differences between M3 and MESH. So once again, M3 is the thesaurus that we use in Embase and MESH is the thesaurus that is used by PubMed. Uh, I guess one of the natural reactions that you would have is try to copy your search from PubMed into Embase. Unfortunately, it is not really possible and I'm going to explain you why, okay? So here we see the graph of comparison between M3 Mesh and what you're going to have as, as, as a benefit for using Embase. So in Embase, you're going to have over 370,000 synonyms including 200,000 of drug synonyms. So it's quite a lot compared to PubMed that just has in total around 220,000 synonyms. Um, then the next is Embase is gonna include also MESH terms. So if you're used to be searching uh, in MESH terms, you can, uh, you can use them in, in Embase as well, okay? Uh, but you cannot use Embase terms into PubMed. M3 as a thesaurus is larger. It has over 82,000 preferred terms. When MESH has just 27,000, it is just numbers. But at the end, when you're going to be working with the tool, you're going to be really seeing the difference better. You have exhaustive uh, drugs facets with M3 and we're going to show you uh, more on it a little bit uh, later when we're going to go to the live demo. And then for the drug facet, facets that you have in PubMed, there's just 9,000 terms. Then you have over 4,500 specific terms for general and medical devices. And I'm not sure if you have any connection to medical devices, but it can be specifically relevant for you. And of course, yeah, few, fewer medical terms uh, when using PubMed. Uh, you have detailed Dragon device trade names. So all the searches are also going to be focused when you're searching in a base is going to be focused on the device trade name and the manufacturer. Okay, it's all going to be indexed in there. Um, what about the updates? Because it's important, of course, for especially in the time that we're living in right now, or just in general, it's important to know how often do we update this database because the information changes. So for Embase, we're going to be updating our Tesaurus every three times in a year. When PubMed is updated just once a year, so you're going to get it actualized a little bit later. So for these reasons is why you cannot just copy paste from 
PubMed to Embase, but it's possible to do it the other way around. So how does Embase deliver its value? Uh, as mentioned before, in Embase we have scientific journals, we also have something that is not published yet, and we have conferences, so information from the conferences. Uh, we add them quite often, so every month new information has been added. Uh, and we, why do we do it? Because of course we want to be sure that you don't miss any critical information in your research. We do the deep indexing, and this indexing is the one that I told you about before, is the M tree, so this is our taxonomy. And we base this taxonomy on different terms. So the terms are drugs, diseases. We also talk about adverse effects. We also talk about clinical trials and drug trade names. So all this information you're going to find in Mtree. And of course, the nearest alternative would be reading the articles yourself. But I think that's why the databases should be smart. And that's how it should save you a lot of work. We do have different search uh, parameters. So for example, if you do specifically, if you're specifically interested in systematic reviews or you want to do uh, pharmacovigilance research, then you would have specific uh, ways of, of, of making this search through Embase. You're gonna see it better afterwards. Uh, yeah, so of course, for example, if you search in the broad terms, you're going to have a lot of results, like 200,000 results. So you need to find a way to refine this search and like these get to just hundreds of results probably that are really relevant for you. What you can do with this content afterwards, with the content you can set up email alerts so that the system is going to notify you every time uh, a new result comes up, for example, according to your search. You can track your search history. So you're going to see, okay, what's, uh, for example, I remember that yesterday I did a very nice search, but I don't remember how was it exactly. You're going to remember it was in base, so no problem. You don't need to use your memory too much. Uh, so you're going to have an automatic search. And then now, um, Nadesh, would you like to ask the question? Yeah. So it's, your, uh, it's an open question, so you can turn on your microphones. Um, here you see, uh, uh, or we want to know what is the difference between this part of the screen and this part of the screen, knowing that here it puts slash DE for index terms and it finds 97,000 results. And then underneath, you see that demyelinating disease is in orange. And then on the right part of the screen, we see that it puts a slash exp and then explosion, and it finds 331,000 results. And underneath, it's demyelinating that is in orange. And then other words and terms are also in orange. Underneath. So open your microphone. What do you think the, the difference is? What do you see the difference is? Do we still have people on the line? Yeah, we are here. <laughs> yeah? So mercy, mercy, thank you for it. We are here. <laughs> <laughs> we are here. Yeah, <laughs> you are here. Just so good. Trying to figure, figure it out. <laughs> okay, but then let's figure it out. What do you think? That, like visually, yeah, give you a hint. What is orange and what is not orange? Uh, uh, like on the left hand side, the one that is in orange are the index terms. And yeah. on the right hand side, the one that are in orange are the explosion. Yes. And so, but see, so Mercy, the answer is that when we search with a slash DE, meaning we search only for the index terms, it's only going to take that index term, the one that you, that, you, that you asked. When you say that you want to explode, it means that it takes this term that you asked and it will also on its own pick up and search for all the subcategories. So it's like this one is the umbrella and then underneath it's what we call children terms and these are also going to be searched explosion. Okay?
Okay, I, I hope it's clear for everybody. Yeah. So yeah, this is the main difference, but you're also gonna see it more in the live demo, so you can yeah. see it. So it searches for the broader terms and yeah. broader terms and a broader term together with the um, yeah, it, it, other terms. It's not really broader, but it's uh, okay. It's so, like, it is the broader term and the narrower terms in our index term, it only searches that index term. Yeah, it will search that. Sorry, can you say that again? So, it will search if you search for like on the, on the right side. If you explode it, it will search for the term you have and also for the subcategories. And the subcategories, there are, it's like the dictionary. Uh, it comes from the thesaurus, the M3 thesaurus that Diana was telling you about. So it's like under demyelinating disease, there are also other subcategories. And so if you say, uh, we search for demyelinating disease explosion, then it's also going to search for the ones underneath, so you're more complete. Okay. okay. I get you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I hope it's clear for the okay. rest as well. Eh? Previous, uh, sorry, I've got a question. Sure. On the previous slide, you didn't explain about API and the other term. On the previous slide, oh, yeah. sure. you didn't uh, explain about API yeah. and the other term. Yes. So I don't know what that means. Of course, yeah. So API, it is a connection. Um, it is a connection between the data that is contained inside of Embase and any other tool that you have, okay? So for example, you have, you're used to be using um, a certain tool for your research and you want to connect the data of Embase without using the, the same interface, okay? So for example, in Embase, you have the interface of Embase, you go to embase.com and then you have, uh, you, you see this page. But then of course, this is the way how we present this data, right? But sometimes you just want to have the data, but you don't want to have uh, the same interface. You already are used to, to be using yours. And that's how API is the type of connection where you can use just the data, but not the same interface. Is it, is it more clear? Yeah, it's clear. Thank you. Okay, sure. Cool. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Okay, so uh, what I want to explain you also is the semantic relationship. So uh, among other things, today we're going to go through it and uh, we're going to explain you how to extract the semantic relationship in Embase between, for example, the drug, the disease, the treatment, or the combination of uh, drugs, uh, and how these semantic relationships can help you, actually. It can help you, first of all, to find the information on safety of the medicines. It can help you to find the effectiveness of the medication, and it can help you to, uh, for example, how to repurpose the drugs to create a strategy on how to repurpose it. So for instance, as an example, we have here one of the drugs, uh, Everolimus, and then we think, okay, what would be the adverse drug reactions of the drug? And then we search in Embase and we see that stomatitis, diarrhea and fatigue are gonna be the adverse drug reactions. So what does it mean? It means that not just these three adverse um, reactions appear in the same uh, document, but it actually really is related to Everolimus. So our indexes, like I showed you in the beginning of the presentation, they read this article and, or all these articles, they read them and they understood that it's not just um, these reactions that can happen and in the same paper, it talks about Everolimus. No, 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 they, uh, like Everolimus cause these adverse drug reactions, okay? And the same you can do with drug therapy. For example, you search Everolimus and then you search it in connection with another drug therapy and then you can see um, what, what is the outcome. You can do the same with drug comparison and you can compare Everolimus in this uh, scenario to other drugs. You're gonna find the results, relevant results, especially for this search. You can do the same with drug interaction. 
so how everolimus would interact with other drugs and you're going to see the results and you can have the combination of different drugs so how everolimus together with these three drugs would work in a combination So all these semantic relationships, as I said before, they are manually extracted and like this, it's, it's really relevant. What about the, um, the research in Embase, for example, you're interested in searching for specific drug trade names or manufacturers, or you want to search for medical devices. And then within medical devices, you're interested in specific trade names and manufacturers. So all these names are going to be indexed in Embase also. So you would find the information, for example, if you want to search for a specific uh, device manufacturer or a specific trade name, okay? Both for drugs and for medical devices. And uh, for coronavirus, this is, the, this is the topic that combined the most of your votes for, today, uh, for today's presentation. And that's why we wanted to talk more in detail about it. Yes, so we will, we will take that example. Um, because it's a, it's a hot topic. So just for, I, I'm going to show you not the method, but a method. So every time you want to use Embase, there are different ways you can search. Uh, in this case, the coronavirus, uh, <clears throat> in the thesaurus, uh, we, we make the distinction between the virus and the disease. So, uh, can I, yeah. So for example, the virus, it will belong to the section of Embase that is organisms, while the disease will belong to the section of the thesaurus that is, on, that is based on disease. The thing is that this disease or this virus is really brand new. So um, it didn't exist beforehand. So we don't even have that many articles or no articles with the new terms of severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 or coronavi coronavirus disease 2019. So we started indexing them, but it's not yet officially in the thesaurus, but we have uh, gathered all the synonyms here for the virus and for the disease. And these, you cannot find them yet, but I will show you, we have, uh, we have concatenated them. And if we want to search now in Embase for the virus, we would use this. If we want to search for the disease, we would use that. And we'll go through the example. So I will uh, take the control again of, this, of the, the screen. Let's see if it works. Can you see? We can see your desktop. Yeah. Can you see now Embase? Everyone? Yeah. Yes. Yes. OK. So yep. here, when you land in Embase, it looks like this. You have uh, tabs on top, search. Then you have M3, which is the thesaurus or the dictionary, uh, the list of journals that we cover, the results. For now, it's empty because we have not started a search. And then you have my tools. And my tools is where you can save your searches uh, or set up email alerts and find them here. And that depends on whether you have a login. So the first time that you log in to Embase, Mm, make sure that you create yourself uh, yeah, that you create yourself a login so then you can save your things if you have questions or if you are wondering oh we saw that during the training but how does that work again then you can also go here to the help menu with the little um, question mark and then you can type your question and it will pop the, the topic that you uh, that, that is relevant so when you land in Embase uh, when you, land, <clears throat> when you land in Embase, it looks like this. You're in search and in quick search. You have different types of searches. So every time you want to search something, you have to think, I want to search, so I go to the search tab. Uh, so, sorry, Nadesh, can yeah. everybody see the screen? Because I think we stopped seeing the, the share screen. Oh, really? No, we can. No, we're, no long, we're now seeing a beautiful picture. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful picture? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Just before, I think you pressed something and we don't see Embase anymore. Like it's ah, not... okay. We can see you both. We can see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but... No, but I mean, it's nice that you say that we have a be beautiful, that we're beautiful or whatever, but 
that you see embase. Do you see embase? Now, yes. Now okay, we can now see how it is. Yes. Okay, perfect. So when you're in search, you have the quick search and the Pico search. These are the two ones that we're going to use today. So when, you're, when you land here, you could say, okay, it's kind of like Google. So you're going to start and say, I want to look for coronavirus infection. So I type coronavirus infection. And here I start typing it and you see that it proposes me terms. So either the, like this one, or it says, if you want to look at coronavirus infections, then it's better that you use that because we index it underneath this term. So I say, okay, coronavirus infection, and I click on show results. And now I land in this tab, the results tab. So here I get 12,088 12, results. Um, it's a lot and we don't want to read through them. Uh, so we have different filters. So here first, it tells you on the side here, you have the filters and it tells you how many do you find in Embase and Medline and how many you would miss if you don't go to Embase. So you see, you would miss 2,359 if you're not in Embase. So it might be worth, that's why it's worth to, to check in Embase. Then here you have different types of filters. Some of the easy ones are like, for example, the publication years. And here we see, okay, in 2020, there were already in three months, 806 articles. In 2019, there were 541. So in three months, we've already almost doubled the number of articles. So here you have, yeah, publication years or journal titles, publication types. So you can use these and for example, I can say, I only want to see the ones from 2020. So I select it and I don't forget to click on apply. And then it will show me the 806 articles for, or references from 2020. If I want to, I don't want to see this one and I want to delete it, I select it and I click delete. So what we see is that when we typed, when we clicked coronavirus infections, actually it translated it into coronavirus infection slash X, like explosion, or coronavirus infection. So Mercy, you found and you, you said earlier that when actually we do the explosion term, it means that it takes the terms underneath. And when it search, so that searches in the index terms, and that one means that it searches everywhere uh, in the record that we create. So it can be uh, if there was a center for coronavirus infections and that's where the author uh, is from, then it would also pop up from here. So when we see that, the X, you have to think, okay, I'm gonna go to the M tree to see what is included in here. So I go to M, which is like the dictionary, and I type again, coronavirus infection. And in here, I see, okay, in M3, it, <clears throat> it sits under disease, physical disease, physical disease by etiology and pathogenesis, infection, it's a virus infection, it's an RNA virus, nidovirales infection, infection, coronavirus, and if we explode it, it means they will search for this one and also from the one, for the ones underneath. And the ones underneath, it contains avian, feline, murine, porcine, <clears throat> swine, turkey. So it does contain also some animal diseases uh, or infections, but some of them can be transmitted to the humans. So we know, okay, we're gonna take everything. And what we see also that it has the synonyms. So here we only have one synonym and it's the plural form, but sometimes we have many more synonyms. So every time that you see uh, there are synonyms, you should think, okay, I'm going to make sure that I include them. So I go to search and instead of going to the quick search, which is quick and dirty, we go to the one next to it, which is PICO. PICO, it stands for, uh, it stands for population, intervention, comparison, and outcome. It's a way to frame a research question 
For example, you want to know if uh, people who had cardiovascular disease population uh, and who received kinesiotherapy intervention have an uh, improved quality of life. That would be the outcome. You don't necessarily need a comparison. So that's what it's originally made for. But you can also use it uh, for the fact that it brings you the synonyms. So here, if I put again, coronavirus infection, I will see that when it explodes, it's the same terms as we saw in the M3, and it suggests me two synonyms. I click it, and it takes those synonyms. If I don't want I can select them, and I can also say where do I want to search for them, and I will search in all fields for now and I click on the results. So here, because I included the synonym search uh, also other, in other places of the, of the record, it's normal that I have a bit more results. Here we had 12,088, now we have 12,210. So it is more complete. So once again, on the side, we can see the sources, how many do you miss if you don't search in Embase, and then you have other ones. So you remember that there were some on swine and avian and turkeys and mice and so on. So we can, we can first of all say here using these limits, we have one that is called quick limits. And if I click on it, I say once on humans. So I select only humans and I and so here I go from 12,210 results to 8,857. Now let's say that I only want to see the ones who are, that are written in, uh, in English. So then again, in the quick limits, I could go to language. And here I have all the different types of languages. And I can say I only want the ones in English. And I add that. So now, we went from 8,857 to 7,800. Now let's say that you want to start with just the systematic reviews. You don't want to read all the articles. You just want to first see the, the systematic reviews. Here again, on the quick limits, you have one that is called EBM, as for evidence-based medicine. And if I click on it, I can say, I only want to see the systematic reviews and I search. So out of the previous batch of articles, now I'm going to select only the 86, which are systematic review. And when I look at the results, indeed this one says it's a systematic review. And if I click on the index terms, I will see that it includes um, terms that are related to coronavirus infections. So this one is an exploded term from coronavirus infection, it's on human and it's systematic review. If I look at the next one, it's also coronavirus infections, it's on human and it's a systematic review and so on. So I can check on all of these articles that they are relevant. Um, what I can also say is, um, okay, uh, now on the side, if I come back, I can, I can navigate through uh, the different, uh, the different, uh, I'm going to just mute, I'm going to mute you, but you can activate if you have a question. <laughs> we, we can't hear you now. Yes. Okay. Uzoma? There's, uh, can, you, can you all make sure that you mute your microphone? Uzoma Ona or Ona Uzoma? Can you make sure that you mute also your microphone because there's like a background? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so we can navigate through uh, here through the different um, uh, sections. So if I click on this one, it becomes orange. That means that I will have here in my results the 7,839 results. So let's say that uh, I'm going to take this one here that was on coronavirus infections and humans. Here on the side, I have one uh, tab that is called drugs, and that gives me an overview of all the drugs that are being uh, indexed, that are indexed in uh, the, that bunch of articles uh, about the topic. So if I see, okay, it looks like ribavirin is one of the first uh, drugs or the most mentioned drugs. And if I click on details, then I can see, okay, it was mentioned with adverse drug reactions, also drug combination, drug comparison, and drug therapy. Aha, if I click on this one, then I will see it was a drug therapy to coronavirus infection. So if I click on this one and I scroll down and I say, apply, it will pull me the 42 articles that talk about coronavirus infections on humans and where ribavirin uh, was uh, used as a drug therapy to coronavirus infection. Now, if I place myself, so here I get 42 articles. Now, if I place myself again on this batch of articles and I look at the disease, in the disease, it's what Diana was explaining you about the subheadings and the triple link. Now, if I go on coronavirus infection and I look at the details and I want to know what is the drug therapy to coronavirus infection, then I see ribavirin is also one of the, com the most common ones. And then if I apply, then I will find also the 42, and it's the same 42. It's just two different ways of getting to it because there's a link between the drug and the disease. So either the drug can, be, can treat a disease or the disease can be treated by the drug. So this is interactive and you can, you can choose which one you, you want. If you're happy with these results, you can select them all and you can export them and you have different types of export. You can use a RISC format or Word or Excel or a PDF. So for example, if I take a PDF and I say, I want by default citation abstracts and index terms, and I export it, then it will create me a PDF with the title abstract and index terms for the search here that we created. So here title and so on. So here then you can have a, a summary of what, what your search was today. Okay, now let's say uh, that if we go back again to our search, the initial one with the 8,857, so I click on it, so it becomes orange. So I'm again on this one that is active and I say, I only want to see the ones that were in uh, 2020. So I'll go to publication years. Up, and I don't forget to apply. So now I'm going to have 714 results that are on this topic. And if I look at them, okay, I see also here you see the, the, in the title it talks about the 2019 novel coronavirus of pneumonia in Wuhan. So let's remember that term. So now let's say, yeah, we know uh, we have pulled these articles that talk about the topic, but we want to know the ones that focus on the disease management, like uh, how, did, how can we manage such a disease? So if I look under the disease here, under the tab coronavirus infection details, uh, I have drug therapy or side effects, uh, but I don't have anything on the disease management. So how can I do that? How can I add? the disease management. I go back to search and I go to PICO, like we were earlier here, and I'm gonna add the term disease management. And in disease management, I see that when I explode it, it will take into account all the, the index terms of device economics, economic evaluation, managed care, pharmacoeconomics, practice guidelines, quality of life, and treatment outcome. If I want to add the synonyms here, 
I say yeah, disease management, yes, diseases management, yes, disorder management, and so on. Yes, I want to keep them all. And I combine them. So between these lines, there will be an end that will be written automatically. So when we go in results, now we have coronavirus and disease management. I want it only in humans. So I'm going to go here on the quick limits, only in humans, and I search. And I go back to, I go to 1,134 articles. And now let's say that I want only the ones from 2020. So here I see that it has doubled in less than three months. So I want only the 2020 and I apply. If I look uh, on the side here, then uh, I can see in the drugs, the most commonly used or indexed drugs were antivirus agent, remdesivir, lopinavir plus ritonavir and so on. But I don't see anything that would be not related to a drug. So if the question is now, uh, are there alternatives to using drugs? Maybe because there's a shortage of drugs or maybe because they're not available. So for example, could the traditional Chinese medicine, uh, is, are there articles that compare the drug therapy to uh, non-drug therapies like traditional Chinese medicines? So again, if I see, well, it's not in the drugs, uh, under disease, would I have something about drug alternatives? No, I don't. So I have to go back and include that term Chinese uh, medicine in a search. So I go back to PICO and I'll keep OE, coronavirus infection, yes. I'm not going to take the disease management, but I'm going to say I want to have things about drug therapy, okay. I explode, so I include those, I add the synonyms, and I also want traditional Chinese medicine. So if I want traditional Chinese medicine, it says just call it Chinese medicine. And I use the synonyms. And I go to the results, so I see there are 100 references that talk about coronavirus infections and drug therapy and traditional Chinese medicine. So if I go uh, to the drugs here on the side, <clears throat> I will see that there are some that are like real drugs, methylprednisolone, but we also have, for example, herbaceous agents. And if I click on details and drug therapy to coronavirus infection, then I will have <clears throat> the articles that talk about herbaceous agent being a drug therapy to coronavirus. And I have two papers. If I look down, then I can see yeah, Chinese herbal medicines or traditional Chinese medicine is a resource for drug discovery against the virus. Okay. Is it so far? So, oh, I see that there are questions on conversations. Hold on. Sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't see the, the chat. Alors, I can't hear. Can you hear? We can hear you. Maybe it's a connection. It's it's an okay connection or not too good? Uh, no, we can, we, can, hear we can actually hear you. Maybe it's hair connection. Ah, okay. Okay, good then. So um, for now, let's say that we can, you can hear me. So I hope in case you just chat me on the, on the thing. And so far, is it, is it okay? Or is it going too fast? Or do you, do you understand the, the principle? It is uh, fine. Uh, it's really good. It, it, yeah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> but it's, like for someone who is a beginner, it might be a little bit fast. Like someone who okay. hasn't had experience, like such experience, like I can say for myself, it is okay because I've got experience in using PubMed. So, okay. so but for yeah, so it goes too fast. It. Okay. So I'm going to try yeah. to slow down uh, a little bit, but anyway, then I'm going to give you the control over the screen. So you can search through and I can help you uh, directly while I'm, while I'm here. So you'll have an exercise, don't worry. Okay. okay. So here, for example, okay. because it's, so when it's in the corona, on the coronavirus topic, uh, 
if you want to see the full text. Normally you click on the full text and it depends on your access in your country, in your institution. But for coronavirus, regardless of your country, your institution and so on, Elsevier has set um, um, a COVID center. So here I copied the title and if I go to the novel coronavirus information center, it's on the Elsevier website and it's free and it's available from anywhere. You can see view the 20,000 free articles. So if I click on it, I go directly to Science Direct and I could say, okay, I want to search for, oops, uh, there was an old article that I was searching. So I type in that name and you see you have the in silico screening of Chinese herbal medicine, the one that we had found in Embase. If I want to download it, I just download it and it's free and you get it automatically when it's on the COVID. Okay, so here we have our results. Now, uh, let's say that um, we want to know um, that we had, so, so here we had the drugs that we could take a look at. Um, if I go back to this one, the drug therapy and uh, Chinese uh, medicine, I can also uh, go to, hold on, I lost, uh, I lost track of what I wanted to show you. I can go to the drugs here and I can see, okay, there's herbaceous agents, uh, Chinese drugs, corticosteroids, and so on. So if I select now, um, for example, the herbaceous agents, all of them, I will get the 45 uh, references on that. And out of these 45, I can also see Okay, what now, what are the other drugs that are talked about on top of the herbaceous agents? They can also be prednisolone. And here, if I click on prednisolone, I can see, okay, was it combined maybe with an herbaceous agent? No, it was not. Uh, was it used as a therapy? Yes, to the acute uh, respiratory syndrome. So you can navigate from one batch of article. You can always use this um, triple link to see really the relationship between a disease and, um, and a drug. So now um, we saw in one of the examples that we talked, it was mentioned COVID-19. So if we want to go uh, more specifically now on uh, the COVID-19, I showed you here that if we're searching for the disease, we need to use this string. So I'm going to copy this one. And I can paste it directly into here. Why do I paste uh, this one? Because actually, uh, I'll just show you, if you search in M3 for COVID-19, it will tell you COVID-19, you see that it appears, but it says it's a candidate term. So the candidate terms means that we have noticed that it comes up more often in the papers. So we're going to start putting it as a pre-index term, and then it goes into a, a list. And when the, meet, the committee um, of Embase meets three times a year, then they're going to decide, okay, is COVID-19 something that we want to index for real and for sure in the thesaurus? And so that's why right now it's a candidate term, so meaning it doesn't officially yet exist in the thesaurus, but we start indexing it. So that's why you wouldn't find, if you explode it, you see there's nothing underneath. So we have concatenated that, that uh, special string here. And here I would land on 16,055 results. So same thing as earlier, I could say I only want it on humans. So I go here in the quick limits and I say only humans. Okay. Now let's say that I only want to see it on elderly patients. So here on the side, I also see here in the quick limits, EBM, language, gender, age. I have something about age. So I can say 
okay, I want only on people 65 or more than 80. And I click on search. So now it's going to pull me 76 results that are on people who are above 65 years old. Uh, now let's say that in the drugs we want to see which drugs were used. Again, we see endogenous compound, COVID, severe acute syndrome, and so on. Here we have the diseases, and we can say, okay, coronavirus infection. Uh, if we want the drug therapies, antivirus agents, same as here. So um, let's say that, go back to this one, actually, to have a more global overview. And in the drugs, I have antivirus agent. So I look in details and I see, okay, were they used as a drug therapy? Yes. And for which diseases? Ah, here we have our coronavirus disease 2019. So if I apply, I go from 1,000 and some articles to 13 that mention an antivirus uh, agent as a drug therapy to coronavirus. But I also see in my original batch here that in the drugs, I have remdesivir. So if I look at remdesivir and I click on details, I could see, okay, it's a drug therapy to uh, coronavirus, oops, coronavirus 2019, also coronavirus disease 2019, or novel coronavirus disease 2019. And I, if I apply it, I also get only the relevant results for that. So um, if I go back to that initial search, I can also see, I don't know if you've heard that a lot of people ask about chloroquine. So did this, does this one appear as the drugs that are listed? If I go back and I scroll, so I have remdesivir, oh, I also have chloroquine. So I could see, okay, is chloroquine used as a drug therapy and to what? Uh, to coronavirus disease 2019 and coronavirus disease 19. And I, if I apply, then I get the, two the three results that talk about chloroquine as a potential therapy to COVID-19. So uh, now what I would suggest is that I would give you the control over my screen and then you will do some exercises. So at your speed, we will go through uh, some navigation within Embase. Is it, uh, are you up for that? Ah, Mercy is leaving in two minutes. So is there anyone who would want, otherwise I will continue with the demonstration, but is there anyone that would want to uh, practice directly on Embase? I just please want to ask uh, a question. Uh, you mentioned for coronavirus, all articles are free and accessible. So other articles or other topics, if we are logging in through Research for Life, are they uh, free and accessible? Or it's up to the institution or a publisher or other? I think it depends on when you're logged in under Research for Life, then you have to mention your institution. And then depending on that, uh, you see if you have access. It depends on countries and institutions. Maybe uh, Domitiana, you want to, uh, to give more precisions? Domitiana knows better on that. Hello? Um, Nadish, I just had this question actually from also one of the participants of uh, the training and what happens is that you have to go to the website of uh, Research for Life and then you have to check if your organization is there or not and then if your organization appears under um, the, the organization that have access to Elsevier tools mm -hmm. then you should have this access. If it doesn't appear then probably not and for any support there is a, an email address on Research for Life that you can address to so we're going to provide it to you afterwards, okay? Access from LCV or from Research for Life? Yeah, like your, your institution should be listed on Research for Life as an institution that has an access to Elsevier tools, okay? 
Okay, we are the WHO, so we do have the access for both. Ah, okay. Yeah, then, then for sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure, sure. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? No? One, two, three, no? Okay, so is there anyone who wants to, uh, to take control and to do the exercise? It's, it's actually, it's not to put anyone on the spot. But it's so that the first time that you that you navigate in Embase, I'm here to help you or to tell you, okay, try maybe to click in here or search in in that uh, in that corner to find it. It's up to you, but you have to to answer in the in the chat. Is there anyone or yeah, is there anyone who wants to do it, or do you prefer me to go on with the demonstration? So take your take the chat and just put in if you prefer me to go through with the presentation or if uh, if you want to try excuse me i personally prefer if you could uh, show us another example with another term but if you please can you be a can you slow down little bit okay this is my opinion i don't know the the, the rest of the participants agree or or not okay yeah. since you're the only one so far who voiced your opinion then i'm gonna take it for a hundred percent of the opinion so thank you what what would be a topic that is interesting to you uh, i do not have any any interest the topic may be uh, maybe uh, road accidents. Road accidents. Mm -hmm. So um, road accidents. Uh, let's see if we will have things. I'm not sure if we will have things uh, on that because it would have to be the biomedical field. So let's check. If we want to look for let's, let's see use of antibiotics. Or the what, sorry? Antibiotic use. Okay, for what? In which? Uh, for diseases. Okay. Uh, for abuse of antibiotic use. Okay, so we can put antibiotic, that's going to pull out a lot of results, but we will see. So for example, for antibiotic use, I could, well, I would start the quick search because I want to search. So I go to quick search and I put here antibiotic use. Uh, it's a, a candidate term. So if I put it like this, it will show 15,330 results. So antibiotic use, uh, it's very general or very global. So there are different things we could do. We could say, okay, uh, under the drugs, which antibiotics are the most uh, commonly indexed? We see uh, vancomycin, ciproflaxin, etc. Et so here are the, the, the antibiotics that are the most commonly referenced among these 15,330 articles. So that's one thing we can do. Or we can say, okay, which diseases are often mentioned when talking about antibiotic use? So it's infection or urinary tract infection, bacterial infection, pneumonia, uh, fever, respiratory tract infection, hospital infections, and so on. So here you can have an idea either about the drugs or the diseases? Is there one that you want to focus on, for example, in the disease? Is there one that you want, either a drug or a disease? Do you want me to click? Which one do you want me to click on? The drug. The drug, okay. Yeah. And then among the drugs, which ones would you want to see or focus on? Um, I'm not actually a doctor, but we can uh, 
select penicillin derivative. Uh, the the last one. A penicillin derivative. Okay. So if I click on details of penicillin derivatives, we see, uh, okay, there are adverse drug reactions that are mentioned. That's probably normal because already there are people who are allergic to penicillin, so maybe also they're allergic to penicillin derivatives. So if we want to focus on this one, I would check this one. If I want to see if it's combined with other drugs, I would check here if it's compared, interacting, or drug therapy, or special situation, which one would you want me to, to click on? Adverse drug reaction. Okay, adverse drug reactions. So now we have a list of all the adverse drug reactions that exist with the penicillin derivatives. Which one do you... Penicillin allergy. Penicillin allergy. So I click on penicillin allergy and I apply. So now I have 10 references that talk about antibiotic use, penicillin derivative and adverse drug reactions. So here we see in the index terms, penicillin derivative, and you see that when I hover over it, it says, it says adverse drug reactions, penicillin allergy. So this one in talks about penicillin allergy. Here again, I hover over it. Yes, it was mentioned penicillin allergy and so on. So here you have the abstract and the index terms that allow you to, to check uh, if it's relevant or not. Okay? Okay, just a question, please. We cannot uh, filter by country? Yes, very good question. So you would want like the countries of the author or the country where the allergies occur, like the country. Let's say I, I need to filter by the Eastern Mediterranean region or by Egypt or by uh, uh, okay. in our region. Okay, so but you so you want to see the penicillin allergies in Egypt? Yeah. Right? Okay. So then, very good question. I go to search because I want to add a search term. And um, I can go actually here, uh, just in quick search, I will add, no, actually I will do it like this. I will just put Egypt. So it tells me Egypt, yes, it does exist. And I will have, uh, actually, I, I want to search it in, uh, maybe title and abstract and author keywords, because that makes more sense. It will probably be articles that mention uh, blah, blah, blah in Egypt. So I'll do this in title, abstract and keywords, Egypt. And I have 19,411 results. But here it just means that Egypt was, so, was somewhere in the title, in the abstract or the keywords. If I go down here, I see violence against women in Cairo, Egypt, or here probably in the abstract, it says the crude prevalence of rate of stroke in Kenya, Egypt, blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't say antibiotic use. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the antibiotic use uh, here, this search, and I'm going to combine it with Egypt. So I select both and I combine. That means that it's going to make um, yeah, it's going to find the intersection between this group of article and this group of article. Yes. And here I have 24 references that talk about antibiotic use in Egypt. So here in the abstract, so we see Egyptian antibiotic use. Here we see uh, Egypt and abstract antibiotic use. Here we have, oops, abstract antibiotic use and Egypt. So here it's very relevant. Normally you have the 24 yes. that are relevant. And then you can go a bit deeper because you can say, okay, now from these 24, I'm gonna go to the drugs like we did earlier. And is there penicillin derivative Penicillin derivative, yes, it is. 
And if I look in details, are there adverse drug reactions? No, so there was no, not the allergy. In this batch of paper in Egypt, there was no um, mentioning of adverse drug reactions of penicillin derivative. But yes, only drug therapy. Yeah, it was used as a drug therapy too, actually many uh, diseases, so we can select all and we apply. And here we have so one paper out of all where penicillin derivative was used as a drug therapy. So let's go check this article. Patient attitudes and beliefs and provided practice are known for acute respiratory tract infections in Minya, Egypt. So if I click on here on the, the title itself, I'm going here. Okay, antibiotic use, Egypt, it was good, okay. And here, if I look at the drug terms, I click on show all subheadings, and here it tells me, within that article, it did talk about penicillin derivative, but more imp importantly, it talked about it as a drug therapy to bronchitis, common cold influenza. So without reading the paper, because someone else, the indexers, read it, then you have the information and you know it does talk about this. In, in this paper. Okay. okay, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So as a summary, you would go, you do antibiotic use in quick search, then you do Egypt, maybe also in quick search, you combine both, and then you use the, the links here on the, the, triple, the subheadings on the side. So is there anyone else who would have that kind of question? It can be uh, like something that you are just interested in or interested in or curious about. And then we take your example. Oh, I have a question. Yeah? When you do a search in the M, in the M, M3, yeah. uh, you have two tabs and one says facet search yes. or something. Yes. Yes. What is that? Yes. So here, if I, if I either I type here and I put the name of something or I can browse by facet. When I browse by facet, it's kind, it's kind of like you open the dictionary and you see the different sections of the dictionary. So for example, we have one section that is on anatomical concepts, biological functions, um, here, uh, chemicals, chemicals and drugs, diseases. So for example, if I say I want to look at diseases, but how are they organized? I can click on disease here and it opens me, okay. Is it animal disease, experimental disease, general aspects, mental disease, physical disease, plant disease? Okay, let's say I want to see what is in physical disease. So I click in physical disease. Is it physical disease by anatomical structure, by body function, by composition of blah, 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 by etiology and pathogenesis? So I can say physical disease by body function. What is in here? Uh, is it due to, like the disease due to abnormal blood pressure? Yes, okay, what can they be? Well, it's either high blood pressure or low blood pressure disease. If it's low blood pressure disease, what is it? It's hypotension. And if I go back up and I say physical disease uh, by abnormal blood pressure here, and I say it's the high blood pressure, then it will be hypertension. So it's kind of navigating through the dictionary when you don't know exactly what would be the good term to use. Okay, thank you. Very, very clear. Okay, thank you. Other question or idea for a search? Don't be shy, huh? it's, uh, we're among ourselves. Maybe we can try the road accident. Just well, So all of you think about a topic that you want to search next, but I'm gonna see if there is something about road accidents. Oh yeah, actually, who had that question on road accidents? Me. Okay, so, we, we can use traffic accidents. Traffic accidents. And you want in Egypt? Or was it you or was it? So if we put traffic accidents, 
it will show us 65,000 results. Let's just check in PICO because they must be synonyms. So I'll go here to add. So here uh, in PICO, I could clear field like this, or I can just say reset query so it erases everything at once. So I put road accident, uh, no, and then it says traffic accident. Uh, there's nothing underneath if we explode, but there are 16 synonyms. All of them, and we have 67,369 results. So maybe in traffic accident, what we could look. So one tip: if you you have a lot of uh, a lot of results here, if you want to know what are globally the other terms that are being indexed, so not drugs, not disease, not devices, but other things, you can go here on index miner. The index miner is like a heat map of all the other terms that are indexed in those papers generally. So traffic accident, that makes sense. Human, and makes sense. Uh, article, that's a global term, so some of them are not very interesting, but for example, we can say yeah, mortality. So if you want to know the mortality due to road accidents, you can select that. Actually, there's also a lot of computer-assisted tomography. That's a term that pops up a lot. Uh, head injury. So you see, you can also select, you see what are the other terms that are emergency health services, NMR, seatbelt, blunt trauma. So here you have an overview and you can say, yeah, actually what I want to know is fractures that are due to traffic accidents, for example, and you would select here and you can say that you want to add that term to the query and then it's going to select from 67,000 results, we go to 2,709. Okay, and here maybe in fracture, then we can reuse the subheadings on the side and say in fractures that are due to traffic accidents, what are the drugs that are often used? Antibiotic, analgesic, yeah, that makes sense. Corticosteroid, heparin, that makes sense also. Oxygen and so on. Okay, here we have the drugs. We have the diseases, which are fracture injury, multiple trauma, thorax injury. And we also have in the devices, all the things that can be a bone screw, yeah. Helmet, X-ray, protective equipment. So, uh, what what would you like to see? So, if I go back, I'm going to delete this one. Which what should we focus on with the traffic accident? Maybe injuries. Injuries. Okay. Yeah. So. Here, I would go then to search and I will add the injuries because injuries is not in disease uh, globally, but I could put injuries. injuries. But I saw somewhere injury. It was in the, um, uh, let me see, was it? Maybe in Nico? I... Ah, but yeah, sorry. So here we have disease. So injuries that are caused by traffic accidents. If I <coughs> look at details, <clears throat> do you want the drug therapy <coughs> or do you want the side effects? We can see both. Both? Okay, so yes, we, we can see both. And we apply, uh, hold on. <coughs> okay, and apply. <coughs> So here we have the 31 that talk about traffic accident and uh, the drug therapy or side effects are yeah, so. traffic accident. So when we go here, we see uh, victims of severe trauma, hospital care ambulance service. So if we look at the index terms, we have injury, traffic accident. And if we look, actually, we go in that, rec in that record, 
and we look at injury here, show all subheadings. Injury, it was uh, treated with tra tranexamic acid. So here it's with the drug therapy. If I go to the next one, here I click just on the next button, I have traffic accident, I have injury, and if I show all subheadings, in injury, it was also treated with tranexamic acid, and so on. Here, the next one, I have traffic accident, I have injury, show all subheadings. Oh, and here, in injury, we had more therapy. We had analgesic uh, agent, baclofen, non-steroid, anti-inflammatory, opiate, paracetamol, and so on. Okay? Great. And then if you want to combine with a specific country or with a specific situation, so for example, you want to say, uh, uh, actually on kids maybe, uh, we can go in the results and we say, out of these, uh, so I select it, it's in orange, and I want to say uh, on age, which ones were on, or maybe on adolescence. <coughs> <clears throat> the, uh, and there are three, so here we see that there are three that were on adolescence. So if I look at the index, orthopedic road, blah, 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 adolescence, yes. Okay? Yes. Any other uh, question or idea? Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> no other question or idea about searching? Take advantage of it because then we can practice with something that, uh, that is relevant uh, to you now. Okay, well, I'll count till 10 so that you can, um, you can, you can raise your, your hand or ask. And then if not, then we can maybe just wrap it up and I will send you the recording. So I'll count 10. One, two, three, Maybe we can check for uh, hepatitis. <laughs> ah, very good. You waited until second number nine. <laughs> no, I was looking for the search because one of our colleagues sent me a, a, a search uh, recently. So I was uh, looking for this search. So okay. we, uh, let's say hepatitis uh, B and C. Yeah. Okay. Outcome. The okay. outcome, uh, of treatment hepatitis B and C in Somalia. In Somalia. Okay. Yeah. So to do that, we could go to search because we want to start searching. We're not going to go <clears throat> to the quick, but we go directly to PICO so we can add the synonyms. So here I'm going to clear the field and we have hepatitis B. Alors, hepatitis B. And so here we have the acute hepatitis B or the chronic hepatitis B, and it has synonyms, PP hepatitis, serum hepatitis type B. Okay. So I'm assuming we keep them all, or hepatitis C, hepatitis C, hepatitis C. And so there's acute or chronic. And we're going to add the three synonyms. And uh, the treatment outcome. So let's see if we put outcome, there's an outcome. If I start, so you see, sometimes I also don't know what term I should use. So here that's ah, treatment outcome, right? So if I put treatment outcome, 
then when it explodes, it includes clinical outcome, contraceptive effectiveness, all of it, outcomes research, outcome assessment, treatment failure, unexpected therapeutic. Um, let's try like this and check. So we will talk about patient outcome, therapeutic outcome, and so on. So let's check and we have ooh, a lot of results. So uh, now if we want to look at the, so does your colleague want to see depending on the drugs, what is the, the outcome or can it be treated? Sorry, I don't know, it's not my field. It, can it be treated with something else than, uh, than a drug or a vaccine or, do you know? Like, because I would uh, maybe... Uh, uh, he is looking for how many people tested the hepatitis B and C. Okay. Uh, so maybe what we need to put is, okay, maybe what we need to put is what is called the disease burden because that would give us the incidence and the prevalence so how many people are like things about uh, um, a population, how a population is touched by something. And he wanted to see in Somalia. So hold on, let me think. I would say we go to search, we keep hepatitis B or C, but here we're gonna put disease burden because it includes that. Now, or we want incidence. Does that come incidence? Let's check if that cancer incidence. No, this one is also not. Ah, oh, maybe we're gonna take epidemiology. Yes. So let's take epidemiology, and then it will pick out. Maybe that's what he wants. Age distribution. So. Uh, within the population biosurveillance. Well, cancer, maybe it's not uh, no. once, but... Community assessment? Which one? Community assessment. assessment. Yeah. And age distribution, we can take it or no? Yeah, we can. So I go back to uh, incident, uh, no, what was it? Once I don't remember where, where I was, community assessment. And I was under epidemiology age distribution, so we add it. Uh, then is there something else that we want? Comor no, comor disease surveillance, maybe? Yes. We add it. And then is there another one? Incidence? Uh, infection rate, would that be, uh, let's see what does it Incidence, yeah, but we already oh, no. are thinking uh, incident. Yeah, but incidence includes, exactly. they're not, I don't think it's the correct one. See, because cancer incidence or familial incidence or parasite incidence, maybe not too, uh, too, too. No. Uh, Zero epidemiology. I don't know what that is. Let's check. Um, zero epidemiology. Uh, what are the synonyms? Zero group. Does that is that something that would be a search term for your colleague, or is it relevant or not? No. No. So we take it out. <clears throat> So this one, I'm Why with these terms? so this one, I'm going to remove it. The incidents are remove it. Uh, up. So we have community assessment with the synonym, the age distribution, the synonyms, and the disease uh, surveillance. Great. Yeah. And then should we add? If we put, so here we have 3,780. Should we check with Somalia already in here? Four, maybe we have four results only. 
So I don't know if that's what he expects. Uh, maybe this needs to be in, increased or like uh, put it with more details, but let's look at already these four results. And so, what are the titles? Epidemiology of viral hepatitis in Somalia, okay. So here it has age distribution, hepatitis B, C, Somalia, okay. Outreach to immigrant population in greater Boston area. Oh, but no, it did talk about Somalia, so okay. Uh, virus prevalence in adults in Africa, systematic review. Okay, yes. Mm. And then this one, oof. see, that's why I had burden of disease or disease burden, because in these type of studies, when you have disease burden, then you see the number of authors. <laughs> it's yeah. many different countries, uh, they collaborated together. And it does have hepatitis C, disease surveillance, and Somalia, yeah. Okay. Thank so you very much. maybe, uh, you see by looking at the other terms, maybe uh, we could add things like, uh, oh, these are the terms. yeah, it's to, to be checked. Maybe with the index minor, we would see what are the other um, terms that are being indexed. These are other countries. Uh, Human and Somalia. Yeah, but that makes sense. So, yeah. like to know, uh, should we add? Yeah, then that, that would make sense. Attitude to health, attitude to illness. No. So, maybe maybe to broaden it, uh, if four is not uh, is not mortality, a, maybe or what? M mortality. Mortality. Yeah, maybe we could add. So let's go back to search. And we're going to add mortality here or mortality. So here it will take a lot of mortality. Here it will, I think it will add a lot of noise, but uh, let's check. Oh, no, not that much actually. If we look at eight results. So now in these eight, actually, I'm going to show you something. When you add a term, and so it brings eight, while before it brought four. Here we already looked at the four results, but we want to know what are the difference, what are the four other ones that popped in here. So here I can go like this, and I can say number 32, search number 32, not search number 31. So here I do the subtraction of these minus these. So now we find the four that came up just because we added mortality. So let's look at that. Estimating the scale of Alors, so that might be Okay, so it's in Europe after immigration, okay. Yeah. Hepatocellular carcinoma, so cancer. Okay, chronic hepatitis B, okay. So it's still, we have all the, the index term. Leads from the MMWR. Hepatitis C, mortality, Somalia, yes. Enterically, Hepatitis C, Somalia, mortality, yes. So, um, yeah, so here, maybe this one, the last one that we did, the eight, <coughs> is more relevant. And so then you could say, okay, this one, this save, oh, I didn't show you actually, that you can save a search. So you can say either here, I'm going to save the search, and I'm going to save it in. So here it takes you to my tools. Under safe searches, I say that I want to do it in my own folder from 2020, and I call it hepatitis B 
and C uh, in Somalia and um, disease, uh, well, mortality, etc. Save. And you see here that my save, my search is saved, so you can rerun it, or you can. So let's say maybe in in six months you want to do an update, so you would select it and you say rerun and it will find again all the results that were uh, originally plus the ones that were added between the between now and the time that you do it okay very much this is more than uh, sufficient thank you okay okay <laughs> so um I hope that it's not too much or that at least with the last examples it was maybe a bit uh, more uh, practical or less theoretical for you and that you feel uh, okay, confident to start? Yes, we can start from here. Okay, cool. Very good. But you, will you send us the recording and the presentation? Yes. I will uh, I will send it to the research for life and they will put it they will post it on the on the internet or on their on their website and then okay. you can do it as many times as you want and they will send us a, not a notification uh, that it had been uh, posted uh, that I don't know if you registered to the webinar maybe yes I guess that they can they can do it yes yeah I would assume so I will ask you. I don't know how to, how to uh, reach uh, to reach it so I think they have to send us a notification with the, a URL to reach the, the recording and the presentation. Yeah, but I think that if you go just on the Research uh, for Life website, mm -hmm. uh, I would assume that they will put it directly on here, you know, on uh, maybe on trainings. Ah, in this one? Okay. Yeah, and then you, I don't think you need uh, an, an access, like if they, if they put it directly somewhere here, then you don't need to log in, I would assume. So I'm, yeah. uh, I'm going to ask. Just to say, you know, that this is Domitiana. Ah. I just sent a message in the chat to everyone to answer this question. So don't worry, we'll be, pub we'll be connecting with everyone that was on, the, on this training. And we'll also publish it on the website, as Nadesh said, and we'll make sure that you really know where to find it. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank, you. <clears throat> thank you all for your interaction and for daring to ask uh, questions. And I hope that you will have a, a good start then with the uh, Embase, then they will be useful for you. Yes, it will. And I thank you for the... Uh, for the help, for the effort, and for everything. Thank you very much. Well, then, thank you. have a good uh, thank day. You. Have a good day. <laughs> good and, and safe uh, day. Allah. Yes, you too. Okay. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 And we have to.